in the one plant I toured, the gas went to a huge barn of a warehouse. We just piled up in there. We went in it. it was, was it decaying? Was it? It's was it there for a period of time, yes, but, but I don't know how long. You need a change here, Dan. And um, I'll sit if I need to. Um, the um, this was in the '60s. So, okay. You know, I was in Puerto Rico and uh, visiting and knew somebody and wound up getting a plant tour. It was really quite something to see in the process. But uh, they literally bring a dump truck in and dump the sugar cane in. With it. Middle. The pro the, the sugar the, mm. the raw sugar cane yeah. goes into the, the they just bring it in from the fields in a dump truck together. yeah and they run it through the grinding operation yeah and huge stuff but anyway the, the the gas I know they were using it they put it in the warehouse and then used it to fire their furnaces to, to create steam that they obviously needed to run the, the was that process. was that going directly in you think no it went into the warehouse first and I don't okay. know how long it was in the warehouse. Was there liquid or anything coming off the bottom that they had to drain off? Not really. It was it was moist, but it, it, it didn't seem real okay. wet. Okay. It was certainly high humidity in that warehouse. It was, yeah. It was warm and very humid in the warehouse, so there had to be some active going on okay. in the material. Okay. Um, but how much breakdown, I don't know. It's pretty well ground up and fibrous when they get through with it. It's, it's yeah. But how flexible it is, and that's one of the things you're up against with the rice husk and all this stuff, is it flexible? Because if it's still stiff, and then you, you can see with this one, you it spring back when the you compress it. Yeah. Kills you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I think really what the aging does is soften it to where that elasticity right. is gone. Richard, in his book, I don't, have you guys, know, do you know about Legacy Foundation? No, I don't. Okay, go, go to the legacyfoundation.org, okay. Richard Stanley out in, in, in Oregon, um, invented this thing, basically, back a of years ago. Hooked up with the uh, forestry division for the state of Oregon. Okay. And the state of Oregon are the ones that came up with the compound labor price, the big one. And you've seen the big one? Or, or go to my website. It's it's eight feet long, it okay. takes ten people to run, <laughs> or, or could employ ten people, or it takes a couple people to run. But, um, they're the ones that initially come up with a high pressure press. We, we just made a smaller one, turned it around, and, and got very high pressures mm -hmm. on this thing. Um, uh, and, and he has a website with um, documents you can download and they're, they cost a few bucks but he's got the manual on the theory of biomass briquetting um, how, how to produce it how to train people on it he, okay. I just got an email from him he's in I think he's in Tanzania today or something um, and he just he, they employ him to go to a country to teach a community how to do biomass and he starts from the scratch. Where I was going with that, and Zan was saying, breakdown, he's got a whole procedure for taking a, a 40 foot long or an 80 foot long piece of black plastic, putting all your biomass on it, flip the plastic over, cover it up, seal the edges, and let it cook for a day. Take it over and churn, in other words, compost it. Take it off, it's somebody's job, full time job, every day. Take the plastic off, churn it, put some oxygen in, pop it back over, and you can, you can we broke down stuff in two, in two weeks. We had the here in Cincinnati, right here. The rotatable composter oh, that Ron right. has um, was out there, and I would I put live pasta plants that we cut out of the front yard, green, in there, and I don't think we added any moisture. A couple of weeks, a couple of, two weeks. That stuff. I had briquettes I threw out that it was black and and. and when it dried out, it was all crumbly. We, we made briquettes in two weeks out of uh, pasta plants. Now that's a controlled condition, and I'm churning. I go out and rotate the drum a couple times every day and got it mixed up. Mm -hmm. uh, but, it, but even in his book, he said, you know, four, uh, three to four weeks, you can compost most anything. 
Mm-hmm. Except banana. <laughs> surprise, he tried surprise. it, huh? Surprise, surprise, yeah. Um, Bananas, so, the, the material they had in abundance in Rwanda. That uh, they were, that all this work was really directed toward and didn't ends up not being knowingly applicable to right. banana. Uh, we started all of this because we thought we could use banana waste yeah. for briquetting. We did everything, the presses, the molds, everything, and never thought to burn it. And it wasn't until the end we tried to burn it here one day under that fan and stuff won't burn because it's... Um, yeah, well, it's, it's, good. it's very fine fiber.